Welcome to this video on the ionic product of water. We're trying to understand what is this equilibrium constant Kw all about. So we start off by thinking about autoprotolysis of water. So auto means the same. So it starts with two of the same molecules, identical water molecules. And protolysis means something to do with the breaking up of a molecule to remove a proton. Um, and this can happen in water because water can act as an acid or a base. So why is that? Well, water molecules have are polar. Uh, the oxygen carry a partial negative charge, the hydrogens partial positive charges, and that makes these hydrogens acidic. They're liable to be removed, and especially because water molecules also have two lone pairs of electrons on each oxygen, it's possible for one of the water molecules to actually remove a proton from another water molecule. Now that forms two new products, the hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. Now this reaction is reversible, so the hydroxide ion can remove one of these protons from the hydronium ion, right, so bringing the reaction back. Um, now, um, pause the video and see if you can summarize this first with an equation. Here's what you should have got. So H2O plus H2O and it's H3O plus and OH minus. So what I'd like you to do now is just to practice assigning conjugate acid base pairs in this equation. So pause the video and try that. Okay, here's what you should have got. So this first uh, water molecule here uh, is acting as an acid. So this would be acid one. Uh, sorry, apologies, got it the wrong way around. If we're gonna take the water on the left, this water is actually gonna be gaining a proton. So this one's actually acting as a base. So it's base one. That must mean this is acid two. Um, this molecule here is the conjugate uh, base, uh, sorry, the conjugate acid of base one. Uh, so that one is going to be acid one. Um, and over here, this must be base two, the conjugate base of this acid. So here are our connected acid base pairs. It's equilibrium. So the acid dissociation constant of water. Try and see again if you can pause the video and see if you can write out what the Ka for water would be. Well, here's what you should have got. So the Ka is an equilibrium constant. So it's product concentrations over reactants. So H3O plus over here and OH minus over here. Now, because water's concentration will be very, very high, uh, we actually don't even need to include the water concentration. So you should have got something like this. Now. If you've written it like that, or an e entirely equivalent form would be writing it like this, and you see we've got a product of concentrations uh, and we're now going to call this a slightly different name just because it's a very special equilibrium. So we're going to call this not Ka, but Kw for water. Um, and it's always known as the ionic product of water, and that's just simply because there's a product because it's got a product of concentrations, um, and it's known as the ionic product of water um, because we're making two ions in the process. So this is the ionic product of water, Kw. And why is this significant? So if we just rewrite the expression here, Kw is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. So two important things here. Um, so this Kw value is not zero. So what that tells us is that in a sample of pure water there are some H plus and OH minus ions. 
So have a look here, or H3O plus and OH minus ions. So this is the, the water in the background here, but ever so few water molecules are dissociated into OH minuses in blue and H3O pluses in red. Now, how many is that? Well, Kw's value is 1.00, oh, I'm sorry, one, at least to 1 dp, it's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And the units, we've got two concentrations, so it's going to be moles squared dm to the minus 6 at 298 Kelvin. Now the implication of that is that ionization is very small in extent. The extent of ionization is very, very small. Not many water molecules are ionized, so don't go overboard with this. Most water molecules exist as H2O, but a very, very small number exist in H, as H plus and OH minus, and we'll see in certain situations that's very, very important. Now the third really important feature of this is that Kw is a constant, um, at least here at constant temperature. So if the temperature stays the same, its value is always Kw. So that means that in any aqueous solution, the product H plus concentration times OH minus concentration must be the same. So you can put your solution at any pH you want. You can throw in acids, you can throw in alkalis. Fundamentally, this product remains constant. So if you increase the concentration of H plus, let's say by adding an acidic molecule, you're going to decrease the concentration of OH minus. If you do the reverse, you're going to increase the OH minus concentration, but that means you've got to decrease the H plus concentration. So you can think of Kw as a sort of control lever that whenever you change as an experimenter either of these two concentrations, the other one will change in order to restore K this product to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14 mole squared per decimeter to, decimeter to the minus 6. So Kw is extremely important and we'll see in future videos about how it allows us to work out H plus concentrations and hence pHs in all sorts of different situations.